doctrine that God is in the world has an important practical corollary. The sacredness of nature and the sinfulness and folly of man's overweening efforts to be her master rather than her intelligent, docile collaborator. Subhuman lives and even things are to be treated with respect and understanding, not brutally oppressed to serve our human ends. The ruler of the southern ocean of Shu, the ruler of the northern ocean of Hu, and the ruler of the center was Chaos. Shu and Hu were continually meeting in the land of Chaos, who treated them very well. They consulted together how they might repay his kindness and said, Men all have seven orifices for the purpose of seeing, hearing, eating, and breathing, while this ruler alone has not a single one. Let us try to make them for him. Accordingly, they dug one orifice in him every day. At the end of seven days, chaos died. In this delicately comic parable, chaos is nature in the state of wei, non-assertion or equilibrium. Shu and Hu are the living images of those busy persons who thought they would improve on nature by turning dry prairies into wheat fields and produce deserts, who proudly proclaimed the conquest of air and then discovered that they had defeated civilization, who chopped down vast forests to provide that newsprint demanded by that universal literacy, which was to make the world safe for intelligence and democracy and got wholesale erosion, pulp magazines and the organs of fascist, communist, capitalist and nationalist propaganda. In brief, Shu and Hu are devotees of the apocalyptic religion of inevitable progress, and their creed is that the kingdom of heaven is outside you and in the future. Zhuangzi, on the other hand, like all good Taoists, has no desire to bully nature into subserving ill-considered temporal ends, at variance with the final end of men as formulated in the perennial philosophy. His wish is to work with nature so as to produce material and social conditions in which individuals may realize Tao on every level from the psychological up to the spiritual. Compared with that of the Taoists and the Far Eastern Buddhists, the Christian attitude towards nature has been curiously insensitive and often downright domineering and violent. Taking their cue from an unfortunate remark in Genesis, Catholic moralists have regarded animals as mere things which men do right to exploit for their own ends. Like landscape painting, the humanitarian movement in Europe was an almost completely secular affair. In the Far East, both were essentially religious. If we can move beyond dogmas and work with nature, then the right social conditions for everybody to realize Tao will appear. No dogmas can set the individual or humanity free because all are built on methods to induce Tao, which are methods of force. Thus, if we can be radical enough to live Wu Wei, the right social and cultural conditions will emerge that will enable people to realize the Tao, and this will change our world through not striving for change. The act of trying to force change hinders change. Following your own nature is a subtle act of change. It is also the way that love transcends the personal and moves into the universal.